<laughs> do we have a couple minutes to talk Skinner? Sure. I love it. Awesome. awesome. Me too. Talk, all how did, there's, there's alligator heads all up here. There's alligator oh, wow. on the wall right there. That's a 12 footer I killed. I don't know if I showed it to you. Did you see it when I wow. Yeah, on the wall. Wow. Yeah. This is uh, my son's room. Of course, he don't live with us now. He's married, but this is his room with the alligator stuff in it. My wife doesn't let me keep any of this kind of stuff in our main house because it looks like we're decorated in an early swamp. <laughs> but Skinner was a blast. And here's what happened was, I don't know where Jimmy Hart and I ran into each other at Walmart. And I was just kind of floundering around. And I said to Jim, I said, man, you got to see if you can get me in the WWF. Talk to Hulkster and see if you guys can get me up there because I'm starving. And so they got me a thing with Vince and Vince flew me up there. And I mean, you know, I didn't know what kind of gimmick. I mean, you know, first of all, I've been watching WWF and I, I don't see anybody in wrestling tights except for Hulkster. Everybody's, you know, big boss man. I mean, Undertaker. I mean, I'm seeing these guys and I'm going, holy shit, what am I going to be? Well, I killed 15 alligators in the first alligator harvest here in the state of Florida. When you're allowed to kill the first alligators, I got a license and I killed 15. So I had all this alligator shit. The reason I did that is because I was thinking about getting in the alligator farming business. And I was trying to learn that business because I saw the hides were very expensive and there was a lot of money in alligators. So I thought, well, you know, how do you do it? I went around all the alligator farms. I, everybody was a wrestling mark. So, you know, I could go into the farms and they taught me all this stuff. I joined the Alligator Farmers Association. So when I go to Vince, I say, hey, I don't, I don't have a gimmick, but I just killed 15 alligators and I laid out a hide off of a 12 footer on his desk. And I took this huge skull and a paw. And I said, can you do anything with this? And, and, <laughs> Vince just looked at me, you know, because if we had crossed paths before when, when I'd fly up with Dusty out of Florida to work the gardens, but Vince was a, was a mark. His dad wouldn't let him in the dressing room at that time. So we didn't really know each other that well, right. but he has already, uh, already been introduced to a lot of my friends that were guys on regionalized territories from all over the country. So he knew I was one of these guys. I mean, I didn't have no family ties to anybody, but I'd been around long enough that I'm none of these guys. Okay, so he says to me, he says, Steve, I want you to go home. Let your beard grow out. Don't really do that fabulous one beard. He said, let your beard grow out. Let your hair go back to natural. Um, get rid of the bleach blonde hair and give me about a month and I'll bring you back up and we'll see what we got. So... He, I, he said, I'm going to pay you. And I'm going, you going to pay me to sit home? I love this business. <laughs> I go home, work out, nothing unusual. Let my hair go back to brown. Um, my beard grows really fast. I can grow a beard in two days. So <laughs> that was that's one of the only good things. Only one of the things I'm good at is growing a beard. So I grew a beard quick. I come back up. Vince goes, we got it. And he said, I said, what? And he goes, we got your character. And I said, okay. So I'm excited, right? So he says, did you see the movie Deliverance? And I'm looking at him and I'm going, yeah, man, at least a hundred times. I mean, you know, I'm really sucking up the vents. I got to admit, I was really sucking up. The <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've seen it at least a hundred times, Vince. That's a great movie. You know, like, <laughs> shut up, Steve. Listen to what I'm going to tell you. Okay. So talk about one a job. Mr. Kevin Sullivan taught me to suck up some. So I <laughs> wasn't good at that. It just it was obvious. So when he said, Well, we want you to be one of those guys. And I'm looking at him and I'm going, ah, I got it. Because I'm so good looking as a fabulous one, you're wanting me to be Burt Reynolds, right? You want me to get a vest, Vince? <laughs> and do you want me to get a bow and arrow? I mean, you know, I'm coming up with all of these my idea things. That's awesome. And he looks at me and he said, no, 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 no. You got the wrong guy. He said, <laughs> you remember the two guys in the woods with Ned Beatty and the one guy said, hey, boy, you got right pretty mouth. And I, I go, sure do. yeah, he says, 
I want you to be one of those guys. <laughs> and I'm going, holy shit. And I said, well, I'm cute. He goes, you're not going to be. <laughs> That's great. So they sent oh, me to the Banana Republic. They sent me to the Banana Republic and we bought a plaid shirt and khaki pants and all this stuff. And then they took it to the wardrobe and they put stains all over it and ripped it all up. He said, well, when you come back up for TV, you know, I want you to be an alligator poacher out of the Everglades. And I go, okay. And I came back. We did a bunch of vignettes and we really did a lot of stuff with alligators. It was pretty much fun, except for the guys from New York that were filming were terrified the whole time. And, you know, they built the character and it, it, was, it was a lot of fun because it, this was the very first time in my career, Mike, that I wasn't steve kern now I'm, I'm an actor okay and now my promos in my opinion again went from so so to over the top because it i'm imitating some redneck out of the everglades and <clears throat> if i get lost all i gotta do is laugh and then, then I added the black stuff coming out of my mouth because I couldn't buy a boo. People loved me everywhere I went at the beginning. They're all cheering me and I'm going, oh, it ain't working. I don't have no heat. And I said, I got an idea. What is it that people don't like about rednecks and stuff? And I go, sometimes it's chewing tobacco. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm man enough to chew real tobacco. I could smoke marijuana, but I can't chew tobacco. <laughs> I got licorice mm -hmm. and I would chew a big mouthful of licorice. Well, you know, you worked against me, yep. but I would get that and I'd let it run out of my mouth. And so it was great, but there were so many political things that I didn't know. And I didn't learn till later on in life. And I mean, you know, I had so much heat with Freddie Blassie and I didn't realize how close he was to Vince and, you know, <clears throat> Freddie Blassie hated my guts and, from me ribbing him in Japan. And so he buried me and a lot of things happened. And, you know, Skinner got a little bit of a run, but then, you know, when you're in this business, as long as I am, you see that you're not going nowhere. Right. I saw that Skinner was only going to go so far and that they weren't going to, you know, make anything out of him. And anybody that's been in the business knows that you're only as good as a promotion makes you because it's like, like as an example, a movie, Tom Cruise wasn't a movie star till he had the right movie and had a few and they made him a movie star. He was just an actor or, you know, Keanu Reeves or anybody. So it's the same thing with this business. They could have made, they could have made Skinner the WWF champion or whatever, but that's only if they wanted to. And that's not what they wanted to do. They just wanted cards of guys and that's how it ended up. And, so it started coasting and it just so happened WCW started writing contracts and all my friends started bailing. And now I've been there a couple of years and kind of just not really getting anywhere. And I'm looking at <clears throat> what's my options here. And I said, okay, looks like I'm going to WCW. Let's talk about the book. Okay. Where can people get the book? Amazon. Amazon right now it's on Amazon and I mean you know never having a book before I mean you know I, I got the mentality of a third grader I couldn't write a whole lot so I've got a great writer Ian Douglas that took all of my storytelling and you know made it into a really good book easy to read I read it and, and the only thing I read is the Bible and so I, when I can read a book 400 pages long it was it went easy for me because it was my life story. But now, since it's been out, people have, you know, made comments and reviews about how easy a reading it is. And it's like they're sitting in the in the car talking to me where they're hearing the stories like they're there where they wish I'd do an audio book where I would read it. So they hear my voice telling the stories. But I've been so complimented in the reviews and, and, the, and the reaction I've gotten from it. And it's because it, I don't really try to trash anybody in the book. So people are looking for a book where I'm trying to run other guys down or I'm trying to run, you know, promoters down or whatever. Right. I might see a few things that are, you know, just come from the heart that 
were times that passed by, but I mean, you know, even Vince is as much as we went through and in, in my 14 years working with him, I mean, you know, it was all said and done after FCW. I, I basically walked away with it with no hard feelings towards anybody because it, the way I looked at it is they had supported me and my family. My kids went through college. My son's a doctor. I mean, you know, everything has happened and he was paying the bills. And so I was working for somebody and whatever he was doing, that's his business. And there's no hard feelings about anybody. So I don't write to try to trash people. There's some things I could have wrote. There's some other things I could have embellished, but Sometimes I watch, as, as a matter of fact, sometimes I watch um, podcasts and I've seen guys from my era get on and just lie. I mean, I've been there and they're lying. I mean, you know, they're telling a story and they're not telling the truth. And I'm going like, what are you doing? And I mean, you know, they went from being sometimes friends to almost like, so you're telling a story about me and you weren't even in the dressing room, but you're making me sound bad. There must be some heat there. But I mean, you know, in the book, I could took took some jabs, but I didn't. And I could have really, you know, gone through some of the really hard times. I mean, I buried a lot of friends. I mean, you know, over the years, overdoses, accidents. I mean, things that, you know, suicides and stuff. And I could have really you know, really gone after them. But I, I didn't want to do that. This book is to be handed down to young people that are interested in their business to see some of the, you know, the pioneers. And then I'm no pioneer. I started in 1972. The wrestling business has been around since the beginning of TV. So, so far as for whatever it's worth, is some of the older guys and what the differences was of regionalized territories into the cabling and all of that. But not only the good times, but the bad times, the hard times, you know, um, injured times. You didn't get paid when you got injured. So you you didn't have any money for your family. And, you know, you just you were strung from one check to another if you got it. And I mean, you know, so I, I, I told those stories. I told the stories of growing up without a dad as a prisoner of war. I mean, you know, that's not something to make bad comments about other people is something to tell a story of this is what Steve's life was. This is my, that was my life. And for whatever credits I have in the wrestling business, it's the history that backs up what, where I, how I got there. I didn't just drop in at 50 and now all of a sudden I'm at FCW. I mean, you know, there was a buildup to all of that. So <clears throat> also designed for my grandchildren to read. There's no f bombs. There's no foul language, and I and I'm just as guilty as anybody. <laughs> I mean, you know, you get, you don't want to be in a car with me in traffic if you're one of my <laughs> grandkids. You know, when the light turns green, that means go. <laughs> and you're gonna hear my horn, and you might hear something else. But the idea is, is I want my my kids, to, you know, my grandkids to read it and not, you know be in a situation where they're reading a bad language or they're reading bad situations or whatever. We can all talk about bad things and that's what most people want to hear about. So I'm pre-warning anybody if they're wanting to hear trash, you ain't going to get it. You're just going to hear a story. You're going to hear a lot of stories, but you know, hopefully they're funny. Hopefully they entertain. Hopefully they, they give you appreciation for, you know, what guys go through and girls go through in this industry and hardships and, the good times and the bad. And so I'm hoping to give a total appreciation to the wrestling business, but I'm also hoping to leave a legacy of a story behind about my life. That's great. Well, again, it's the current Chronicles volume one at Amazon. I'm going to put the link to this book in the bio of these videos. So anyone that wants, all you can do is click on it, take you right to the book, pick it up. It's an awesome read.